Hey everyone, welcome to Locked On Lakers for Tuesday. Brian Kamenetsky, Andy Kamenetsky, massive game at the Crypt tonight. Who's going to win between the Lakers and Warriors? That's next. You are Locked On Lakers. Your daily Los Angeles Lakers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks to everybody for making Lockdown Lakers first listen to them every day, Monday through Friday, no matter how or where you get your podcasts. This one's always free and never behind a paywall. Lockdown Lakers on YouTube is where you can go hang out with over 23,000 subscribers to the program, all of whom are wondering, Andy, what kind of effort the Lakers are going to get tonight in a critical game against the Warriors. Critical uh, on like a billion different levels, uh, whether or not the Lakers can win tonight, um, both for moving up potential for preserving their current spot. All of it um, is really at stake um, in this game. I do want to let everybody know that today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NBA. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply, both of them. Um so uh, uh, we'll, we'll get into some things about the sort of the the off season that are very interesting that kind of came up uh, early in the week. Um, but Andy, obviously the playoff push, which uh, the final three games starts tonight against Golden State, that is the big story for the Lakers, both uh, what these games mean and who might play for the Lakers. We <laughs> still haven't heard about Anthony Davis. Yeah, we're recording this show at about 5 o'clock Pacific time, and there's still no update, whether directly from the Lakers or anything that has been leaked to various reporters. So for the time being, there's no clarity about Anthony Davis's availability in this game, the eye injury. All we have right now is the Darvin Ham. There is no update following the game and uh, Dave McMenamin's tweet during it where uh, Lakers sources, sources close to the Lakers, um, were fairly optimistic that he might be able to play. That can mean a lot of different things. For the time being, we don't know about AD's availability. Um, we don't know about LeBron's availability, for that matter, though I am assuming that if he thought there was at least a shot at being well enough to play on Sunday with whatever non-flu-like deal he is dealing with, that he will – I would think that unless – he is like on death's doorstep or straight out of the movie Contagion. He's going to be playing in this game. Reminder to the Lakers, this game against the Warriors, 7 p.m. Pacific time. It is, for all the reasons we're going to talk about, incredibly critical. Um, trying to stay ahead of Sacramento, trying to or regain against Sacramento, try to maybe pass the Pelicans, all sorts of stuff, catch every Lakers and, Oh, game. by the way, not fall into 10th, Andy. Sure. Uh, catch every Lakers game on the hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app search Lakers. Um, yeah, th it's also too thinking about Brian, th this matchup against Golden State right now, the nine and the 10, uh, Lakers and Warriors, respectively. What to make of the first three matchups between these teams, I think is really difficult because. Going back and taking a look at them and thinking about it, one of the Lakers are one and two against the Warriors in this series, but one of the losses, they didn't have LeBron. The other one, for all intents and purposes, they did not have Anthony Davis. And when AD got hurt, the origin the origination of this eye injury, the Lakers were winning before he got taken out of this game. And then the third one was that double overtime insane classic. Um, but the team that was in January and the team was so much different than who they are now. Like Rui was still coming off the bench. Uh, Christian Wood was both healthy and in the rotation. Spencer Dinwiddie was not on this team. Gabe Vincent, who I am presuming, although I don't know for sure, will be able to play. Um, doesn't seem like, yeah, I think him, miss, him missing Sunday's game was a function of the back to back. I think more right. than a, a fresh injury. But obviously, Vincent was not available for that game in January either. So it's just, it's, and Jared Vanderbilt, very importantly, was available and was, he played 41 minutes in that game off the bench. So just, 
The Lakers in that one win were so much different than they who they are now. And then in the two losses, they were missing one of their two most or real one of their two most important players. So I mean, it's one of those things where I, I, I have trouble, to be honest with you, trying to make those comparisons anyway. I mean, even like over the course of 82 games, what happens is, you know, you do have these you know, sort of variances on, oh, yeah, this guy was available and this guy wasn't. And and even then, you know, even when you have comparable players who might be able to, the same group of guys, whatever it might be, you still run into a situation where, oh, yeah, but that was their fifth game in eight days or it was the second night of a back-to-back or they had just started a trip or just finished a trip. And so – you know, in, in terms of, of making the comparison, it's, it's very difficult. I think what you can look at is just that both of these teams, in a lot of ways, have mirrored each other uh, in terms of the inconsistencies all year long. I mean, if you want, if you, there, there are very few teams, I think, that have suffered the same levels of inconsistency of, of good stretches and bad stretches of frustration from fans about, lineup choices and and you know changing lineups and big injuries and all this other stuff. I mean a lot of ways the Lakers and the Warriors are the Spider-Man meme uh, of the basketball world this year. And so it, it it's just really hard because all you can say is both of these teams right now are playing really well. Like that's it. Like I don't I'm not even I don't think the games that have come before matter too much other than in the context of I think relatively speaking over the last couple seasons with relatively similar rosters, the Warriors have been a pretty decent matchup for the Lakers, but it's like, I don't know. I mean, I'm just reading too much in the last year's playoffs. Well, I mean, there's also the, I think the really fascinating comp that both of these teams right now, when it comes to their core nucleus, you know, Steph, Clay, Draymond, LeBron, AD, they are far, far closer to the end than the beginning or even the middle, and just the idea of what comes next, and that's something we're going to be talking about on some level later on in this show, that question of what comes next, how much more can you squeeze out of the identities of these teams as you know them? Those are both big questions hanging over both of these teams. It explains in part why the Lakers and Warriors had been linked to each other it yeah. turned out they had been discussing a potential LeBron trade. Like it never got particularly far. It was shut down. But the idea that the call was they, made. Well, reportedly. just the idea that they would that one one of these teams would seek out the other, that they would be connected this way in trying to extend one of their cores as long as they possibly could feels fitting because both of them are on a really finite clock to make whatever oh, yeah, for sure. could happen happen. And and look, I mean it's 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 really easy the, the 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 Warriors in particular, you know, the Lakers have had a healthy LeBron and AD for most of the season, but really important injuries to the rest of the depth around them whereas, you know, the Warriors have obviously been dealing with injuries directly to Steph and they're just not a good team when Curry can't play. Um, you know, Draymond missing a ton of time like, you know, is as flawed as he can be sometimes and controversial and you know he's not quite the same guy he used to be and all that stuff that team still does not work particularly well when Draymond Green doesn't play he's just too important for how they what they do how they do it how they play defense and all those other things and so you know you, you neither team what what I think is just fascinating to to your point we'll we'll break out of this and and talk a little more about the matchup uh and the the rest of the conference Neither team is catastrophically bad where you look at it and say, okay, this is this is definitively over. Um, you know, the Warriors are not exactly far away from being a very competitive team. Um, and when Steph and Draymond have been available, they've been pretty good. Um, the Lakers are, you know, showing over since the All-Star break that they can be as good as any team in the league. The problem is, how do you get better? If you're both of these teams, how do you take like this year? I, I wouldn't. I think I wouldn't put it past either team to win a round or two in the playoffs, depending on the on the matchups. 
But would I pick either one of them to win the conference? No. I mean, hell, it's becoming very difficult for both of them to end up in the playoffs. There, the, the way things are shaken out right now, you're only going to have to make that type of calculation about one of these teams because the other one may, may be home early. It's true. And, you know, this is it's kind of absurd that this is, you know, we're talking about this in the context of a 9 10. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the, the this is, it, it, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about why this matchup matters so much and then look at the rest of the conference when we come back. But it's, it is a, a really important game. It is the probably the greatest play in game that the NBA could ever conceive of. Um, and it is remarkable that it's happening at a 9 10. We'll get to all of that next. Locked on Lakers is brought to you by LinkedIn. And when you are hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. And that's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. They have a vast network of more than a billion professionals, making it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. And LinkedIn does it all while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is simple when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn understands when you have a small business, you're wearing so many different hats at once, and you don't have time or the resources to hire. That's why LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make this process simpler. They even launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions. 2.5 small businesses used LinkedIn for hiring for a reason. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MBA. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. So, I mean, to, to kind of finish this, this conversation, this part of it, before we move on to the rest of the conference, Andy, like, we talk a little bit more about any matchups or anything you're interested in there too, but like the 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 where to go thing, like because the neither one of these teams are are bad. Like you know the ups and downs aside, like if you do the game where you airlift either team, or, you know let's you know just do it with the Lakers into the Eastern Conference, just their record alone makes them a six. Um, but then you factor in the Lakers are currently ten, they're they're eleven games over five hundred overall. They're 10 games over 500 against the East. Like they have throttled the Eastern Conference because the East sucks. Um, and this is not fluky across the conference. Minnesota is 54 and 24 overall. They've lost, uh, looks like 11 games against the Eastern Conference, but that still puts them well over 500. Denver is, uh, they've lost six. They're 24 and six against the East. Oklahoma City is, you know, 15, 16, 17 games over 500. The Clippers are approximately uh, 21 games over 500 against the East. It's like, you know, these every decent team in the in the Western Conference has beaten up on the East in a bad way. So all of them would probably be right tucked in behind the Celtics um, for for supremacy over there. And so you. Have I think the simpler way to describe it, really quick, is just look at the gap between the Celtics and everyone else. Yeah, I think that's just the. You know, Orlando way. is the third best team right now in the Eastern Conference, and you know, kudos to them for turning things around. But nobody thinks Orlando is a championship caliber group. The gap between the East and the West is so big this year. I mean, both these teams are really good, and you look at this this matchup, and you know, it's it's just it's critically important because the, the Lakers, despite the fact that they could end up, you know, 14 or so games over 500 if they win out for the rest of the year, which is not, you know, you're not setting the world on fire, but you're, you know, a 48 win team is pretty good. Um, and so that's a very good season by any reasonable measure. 48 right. wins is good, is good, especially in this conference, especially when you've had stretches like they've had. And so, you know, if they end up with, you know, 46, 47, something like that, 48 wins. But if they don't beat Golden State, not only do they lose the opportunity to move up, Andy, um, it pretty much eliminates any chance they have of catching Sacramento for a six or you know, a seven or something like that, or the eight, I should say. Um, they really do risk at that point finishing 10th. Because Golden State would then be tied with them in the loss column and would own the tiebreaker. Um, so the Lakers need to finish clear of the Warriors in order to avoid 
having to win both games on the road. And they're, I don't, I mean, to me, the biggest reason other than one, two chances to win one game uh, for finishing eighth over, over ninth is I don't want to play Steph Curry in an elimination game and, you know, like win and go home kind of thing, win or go home. Like that is of all the, the guys that are out there and of all the teams and whatever that are just most terrifying to me, it's the idea of, it's Steph, and it's one game, and especially it could be on their home floor. No thank you. Um, yeah, I, I, mean, I wouldn't want any part of that. I mean, the good news is I think most teams would say the exact same thing about LeBron and Anthony Davis. Sure, which, yeah. Which, again, just speaks to how difficult the West has been this year. Like, I started looking um, while we were talking just at past seasons, trying to figure out how many you have to go back if – it exists to win 48 games and not make the playoffs because we were talking about winning out and winning 48 right. games. Which, by the way, is any... what could happen to the Lakers in theory if there was no play-in. Right, that's that's in, what I'm talking about. Days, or, if right. they, or if they end up getting eliminated in the play-in, if it exists, you got to go back several seasons because I wasn't able to find it. You know, if LeBron and Anthony Davis are both able to play in this game, I like their chances a lot against the Warriors because the – they don't really have an answer, I think, for Anthony Davis over four quarters. Um, nope. Because even with what Draymond can sometimes do in that matchup, there's an awful lot of size that you have to contend with as well with LeBron and Rui. And Draymond can only be in so many places at once. Um, and you know, like Trace... Uh, Trace, uh, Trace Jackson, Jackson David. Davis. And, that, that, to me is, that to me is the most interesting wrinkle, not to, to cut you off, but like you talked about Rui not being in the starting lineup before. His insertion there changes that size thing yeah. for the Lakers where they you go LeBron, Rui, and AD up front. Obviously, that's something that Lakers fans have been wanting to see all season long. But the Warriors have put Jackson Davis in their, in their starting lineup, and it seems to have really sort of re-triggered the kind of defensive play that was allowing the Warriors to be so good over the over the years. So it's like all of a sudden you have this guy in there. Um, it's it it really is a, like just that match alone um, changes the dynamic that makes it hard to compare those previous games. Yeah, I mean it's just there's there's not a lot to go on other than how have both teams been playing, and the answer is both teams have been playing really well. So. Again, assuming LeBron and AD are both available, it may just come down to playing at home. You know, the Lakers have been – I mean, the Warriors have been a decent road team, but the Lakers have been extremely good at home. And this game is exceptionally important to the Lakers. You know, they've unfortunately – about the only bad showings they've had over the last month are against teams that they were directly chasing and really needed – you know, they, they had those two bad – games against the Kings. They had a bad game against the Suns, like in terms of those opportunities right in front of them. And they, those may ultimately be the thing that ends up biting them in the ass when the smoke clears. But for the most part, their play has been really, really good. I think they are confident for a reason. And I imagine they are going to be treating this game with playoff urgency oh, the utmost of care i i would expect I, that doesn't mean think, they're necessarily going to play great but it just means they'll take it seriously yeah Plus, i think the, the building TV game against the warriors for god's sake yeah i think the building is going to be absolutely electric the crypt i think i think i'm, I'm actually uh side note and, and a bit of a plug i'm going to be doing halftime and post game for 710 espn radio the lakers radio affiliate so if people want to listen before you eventually hear our show, that would be awesome. Um, but, you know, I'm going to be in the building because we do uh, the halftime broadcast from inside the crypt. And I guarantee that place is going to be absolutely rocking. And look, this, this is ultimately a very good test for what lies ahead for the Lakers wherever the play-in shakes out for them because we know unless things really get weird they're going to be doing some version of the play-in and the stakes of the play-in yeah. are extremely high so to, it's, it's a it's a good tune-up it is to your point you know you know whether tune in uh play in or what version of it you know the lakers are still looking at opportunities to move up um they are 
a game behind Sacramento in the loss column, two games behind New Orleans in the loss column. New Orleans has a game in hand uh, on the Lakers. They have four games left. Lakers have three. Um, currently um, also two games behind Phoenix in the loss column. Phoenix also with four games remaining as opposed to three. Um, the A lot of these teams play each other. The Lakers play the Pelicans. The Kings play the Suns, I think, and the Pelicans. It's There's a lot of um, insider trading going on here, so to speak, that make the combinations and permutations very uh, confusing. Needless to say, if the Lakers want to move up, they have to win all three of their games. Um, and they need a little bit of help. And the order that the help comes in also matters. One, one interesting thing to keep in mind the Lakers, it's not just head-to-head. -head. We've all kind of figured out what the tiebreakers are. If the Lakers can beat New Orleans next week, they have the tiebreaker over the Pelicans. Whether it matters or not, we don't know. They have the tiebreaker over the Suns. They obviously do not have it over the Kings and, and currently don't have it on the Warriors either. So um, like all of that stuff comes into play. Three-way ties, however, get really interesting. Shorthand, any three-way tie that involves the Sacramento Kings, the Lakers will be at the bottom of that. All of this can make your brain hurt. Just look at the standings next week after the season's over. Um, let's talk a little about the future, though, Andy. Some interesting stuff kicking around uh, early in the week, so we'll get to that next. Locked on Lakers is brought to you by Game Time. And years ago, some friends of mine and I, we went to go see LL Cool J in L.A., at the old, now defunct House of Blues, really last minute. We didn't know how to get tickets, so we went to a scalper. He sold us fake tickets. And getting tickets to your favorite event, it should not be stressful. It should be fun. It should be enjoyable. And that's why I love game time. It's the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy shows, and theater near you. And with killer deals on last-minute tickets and the best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets, start getting hyped for fun. They've got last-minute deals where you can save up to 60% off buying for, again, sports, comedy, theater, concerts, all sorts of stuff. Flash deals where you save even more with the exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or event. Uh, the game time guarantee always means you get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section of row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. It is the fastest growing ticketing app in the country for a reason. So snag the tickets without the stress using game time download the game time app create an account use the code locked on mba for 20 bucks off your first purchase terms apply again create an account redeem the code locked on nba for 20 bucks off download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed um okay so uh, some interesting stuff coming out of the Hoop Collective podcast. A lot of Lakers news uh, in the newest edition of the Hoop Collective podcast. Or uh, prognostication, really, not yes. news. Right. Well, Lakers chatter. We'll say chit chat. Sure. Uh, with with Windy, uh, Brian Windhorst of ESPN. Uh, first of which has to do with um, D'Angelo Russell. Uh, and uh, Brian Windhorst saying that he believes that D'Angelo Russell will actually opt out of his deal um, and become a free agent this offseason. Whether that means with the intention of leaving the Lakers, um, though, is a different story. Yeah, who knows? Maybe he could be looking to rejoin the Warriors for a second go around. Reminder the Lakers playing the Warriors tonight, 7 p.m. Pacific Good time. Tag. Yeah. Critical, critical game. Catch every Lakers game on the hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Search Lakers. It was an interesting conversation about D'Angelo Russell. It was uh, Brian Windhorst, our buddy Dave McMenamin from ESPN, and also Tim McMahon from ESPN. And they all seem to agree that D'Lo would do this between the season that he's having, a potentially thin free agent class, which could uh, raise you know D'Lo's appeal around the league. But also, and I, th I think McMahon brought this up, but it was, I thought, a, a, a smart point. Wanting to avoid being an expiring deal and having yet another season of appearing as tradable as possible. And so it's clear none of them dwelled on the notion of D'Angelo Russell leaving. Like I they really didn't even spend that much time talking about like the idea of where he could end up going. Uh, last week or two weeks ago, when Brian was out of town, Alan Sliwa from 710 ESPN was on with me and 
we talked about a piece that Michael Scotto from Hoops Hype had written about D'Angelo Russell. He'd done a sit down with him and the potential spots that he could go. And the two places I found most intriguing were either the Magic, just because they have some good defensive guards, uh, particularly Jalen Suggs, but they don't really have a, a scoring member of the backcourt. And then the other one that was really interesting, the Spurs. Um, D'Lo helping set up Wemby for some better shots. But um, either way, though, like none of the guys on the Hoop Collective seemed – if not, they didn't spend much time talking about where D'Lo could end up going. What I find really interesting about this, though – Yeah, something- I mean, I think – I mean, just – exactly. I think the most likely – the most likely of those – scenarios is he opts out to re-sign with the Lakers. I mean, I'm not saying it's a 70-30 or something or 80-20, but I think in any scenario where D'Lo opts out, there's still a very strong chance that he does so with the intent of returning to L.A., assuming the yeah, Lakers he, want him. He seems to like it here. Um, he's he In that interview with Michael Scotto, talked about enjoying being a Laker and did, he did not seem particularly interested in leaving what I think is going to be really interesting about this is one, the idea of the Lakers truly committing to D'Lo in a contract because by his own admission, his current contract was set up to be made tradable um, with the uh, no trade clause, the implied no trade clause that he turned down to get a, a player option for the second year. But also, does the league finally buy into D'Angelo Russell? Because up until this season, I think the overwhelming majority of his time in the league, the consensus has been a very strong no. We've talked before, Brian, about you and I being two of the lone residents with some of the prime beachfront property on D'Lo Island. Like we've been very much in the minority as guys believing in D'Angelo Russell. Does that change after this year? Because he's having a hell of a season. He He also has a hell of a reputation. He does, and but I, I think the number matters here. Like, you know, are we? T- he's twenty eight years old, so I mean, he's still in, you know, well in, you know, well into his, you know, prime. There's not any worry about that. He has been reasonably, um, you know, durable certainly, you know, this year, and you know, he's played, and I think that his game overall, because of you know, for all the reasons that we criticize him, it's not. You know, a high flying act built on athleticism. His game should age just fine. I mean, he's not going to get much worse <laughs> defensively. Um, you know, his his smarts and his shooting ability and all that stuff. Um, his ability, to, you know, his offense is built on the change of speeds and his vertical is going to remain the same. Right, not non existent like mine. Like I couldn't jump when I was twenty eight either. <laughs> so we have a lot in common. Um, and so, like that part of it, you actually would feel comfortable giving him, you know, three or four years into his early thirties and all that kind of stuff. It's just, I, I think uh, he is a guy whose value is framed, I think, by well, what's the number attached to him? D'Lo at seventeen and a half million this year is a, an incredible bargain given what he's been doing and how well he's been playing. If you have to double that, then you start getting uncomfortable again. But like, are we talking about? He opts out to sign at three and uh, three and seventy-five. You know, twenty-five million a year. That's a lot of money. I'm not trying to poo-poo that, but like that is he's producing it. Twenty, you know, in the by NBA standards, that's kind of what he's earning this year. And I, so there's that question: is like, do the Lakers feel comfortable with giving him a bit of a raise and committing to a few years? I think it is related to the LeBron conversation, which we may or may not get to today. But like, what does his future look like? How many years does LeBron try to squeeze out of what presumably will be his last contract? Then the last part of it is like, what is the alternative? If you let him go, how do you replace him? And then, you know, this is one of those things. Like, it's the same issue with LeBron. Like, you, if you don't have LeBron on your team, it's not a matter of just plugging in another star. And the same thing applies to a $25 million player or something like that, like D'Angelo Russell. He's going to be very difficult to replace if you let him go. Yeah, I mean, people need to remember that if you, let's just say LeBron and D'Lo both walked at the end of this year, you're not going to automatically be getting like $65 million in cap space. I did the back of the cocktail napkin math on this like a month or so ago. I think you would gain about 30 million in cap space if 
both left, you know, which isn't nothing, but it's not everything either. Like you're not going to have a ton of flexibility to reload around Anthony Davis, who it should be noted is closer to the back end of his prime than the front end. So yes. you don't have a lot of, you don't have like a kick the can down the road season left in Anthony Davis. You know, we, this year, him being so healthy reminds just how precious it is and how much you can't waste anything. Side note, Brian, because we talked about how Delo's vertical will age exactly as it is now, as it will be in 10 years. Per basketball reference, how many times has D'Angelo Russell dunked in his NBA career? Oh, it's something like five or something ridiculous. Higher than that. Like, that. like Higher eight. Than that. It's not, but it's Higher. not. I don't. Is it double digits? It is double digits. Oh, I didn't think it was. It is double digits, but not. It's definitely not triple. Um, I oh, I it's would not say, close to triple. I would say twenty-two then. Very close. Twenty-one dunks in his NBA career. He's had one this season, 2021, 2022, with the Timberwolves. He had five. That was the year of the yam for D'Angelo Russell. He was throwing <laughs> down that year. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just but that, I, I do think, you know, there are certain guys you don't feel comfortable extending necessarily because their games are predicated on athleticism or this or that or whatever. He ain't one of them. Uh, nope. <laughs> I think you can. For better or for you, worse, not a concern. Well, in this particular moment, it was probably for worse for a while, and now it's for better again. And so, mm -hmm. um, but like, we'll we'll get into LeBron later in the week, um, and and all of those things. But I, the Lakers are just in a really interesting spot. You know, the, the, we're we're focused on the rest of this season. Uh, we have a long time. You know, even if the Lakers win a title, we'll still have plenty of time to talk about what comes next. Um, but they they are in a in a in an interesting spot that is reinforced by tonight's game against Golden State, who are also in that similar position. Um, too good, I think, probably to to think about blowing it up, and maybe not quite good enough to feel confident in your chances to take down the conference. But it's a fascinating matchup tonight on the floor. Um, all those different combinations of players, and we'll see what it looks like because this very well could be. Um, exactly what we see in the play-in in you know 10 days or whatever that is so uh lock on lakers on youtube is where you can go see the show hang out with over twenty three thousand subscribers we'll of course be back after the game to break it all down hopefully lakers win on their way to a three and zero finish and a chance to move out of this matchup which i mentioned scares me we'll see everyone tomorrow